And I have a story that I want to tell you about my son, Mac. He was about, he was four, he was almost five at this time when this happened. And it was 2020. Does anybody remember what happened in 2020 that was kind of a big deal? COVID, right? And so there was this thread going around on Facebook, and everybody was in quarantine, so I felt like all my friends were doing this thing where they would ask their kids questions, and it seemed like it mostly related to COVID. I can't remember for sure, um, but they would ask their kids a list of questions and then type their answers and then post it on Facebook, and we got a kick out of reading all the kids' answers. And I don't remember much, but I do remember this. One of the questions was, where did COVID come from? And when I asked Mac that question, he said, hell. And so, of course, I typed that into my answers um, on Facebook, and I posted it. And one of my friends, who, um, as far as I know, is not a Christian, she said, oh, man, I think Mac is right. I think that's exactly where it came from. And I said, there's biblical basis for that. And so then I opened the door for me to be able to minister to her that Mac was not wrong, it did come straight from the pit of hell, right? And so then I was able to share some scripture with her to teach her that. And so I think if I was going to sum up anything about where do, why do bad things happen to good people, I would go to John 10.10. 10. Does anybody know what that says? Yeah, I'm going to say it in the mic just because they can't hear you. But the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life abundantly. And that's talking, Jesus is talking there. So I think if you were going to sum everything up, I mean, there's a lot more details to it. We've had some great teaching about it. I'm going to teach some more about it today. But if anybody ever asks you, you can always go. It's easy scripture to remember John 10.10 10, to explain that. So I think I just wanted to tell you that and wrap that up. Uh, who was here last week or who watched Michael's sermon on YouTube like I did after last week? He did such a good job, didn't he? My favorite thing was his title, Me and God Have History. I love that because it is so important to understand the character of God. But I want to quick review some things that he said last week because it was so good. And I know as a teacher, if I review things and review things and review things, right, then you might remember. So... The first thing he said was the devil is the god of this world. And we're not talking about capital G God. We're talking about little g God. And because of that, we live on an earth that has a curse on it, right? Because the devil is the one wreaking havoc here. He also taught us that sin has consequences. And one of those consequences is separation from God. And also he talked about God gave us a choice. Now today I'm going to concentrate really on this one, God gave us a choice. Um, I'm going to name my message. Have you, okay, th this might be a little bit off topic, but have you guys heard? I think it's a country song that says something like, girl, we don't have a future anymore, but we have history. Have you guys ever heard of that? So when Michael said that his, the name of his message last week was me and God have history, I thought, yeah, but me and God have a future too. So the title of my message today is me and God have a future too. Now, I'm not going to stand up here, even though I'm talking about choice today, it's important for me to say this first. All the bad things that happen in this world aren't because somebody made a choice, a wrong choice. So I want to just lay that foundation right here. But I do want to say this. When you make a choice, it affects your future. So that's where we're focusing today. So I want to touch on this. Things like sickness, cancer, death, accidents, traumatic events, people being mistreated or abused, children being mistreated or abused, physical or mental disabilities, all of these things happen. And I don't, I'm not standing up here saying that's because somebody made the wrong choice, okay? Sometimes we can't always explain those things other than we know the character of God because me and God have history. We know that it didn't come from God. We know that it did not come from God. It came from this earth that has a curse and we know who's running that. So sometimes I feel like people get caught up on that. And it's so important to understand that we live in a natural world with a natural body and a natural mind. And so that's why we have to renew our spirits, renew our mind with the word of God so that our spirits can be stronger than that. And we can overlook that and say, even though I may not understand all of this with my natural mind, I do know the character of my God. And that's where Michael focused last week on me and God have history. So I really wanted to point that out. So uh, John 10.10, 10, I'm going to say it one more time because it's so important to understand the character of God. The thief or the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy 
but Jesus has come that you may have life and have an abundant life. So I know that the word of God, and this isn't the only verse, the, the Bible also says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. It never says God's gonna give you something, right? It never says God's gonna um, teach you a lesson. Yes, you go through trials. Yes, you go through things that mold you and, and make you into um, a stronger person, a sh that make your spirit stronger, but God is not bringing things to you to teach you a lesson. So I want to get rid of some of these catchphrases too. Let me turn my page so I can remember them exactly right. Um, everything happens for a reason, or God, God makes everything happen for a reason, or, or God took this person to gain another angel. Those are just catchphrases. Don't get your beliefs from catchphrases from popular belief. Get your beliefs from the word of God. That's the only place where we can get our beliefs. So if people are saying that stuff, you say, no, I know my God. I know what the Bible says about my God. I trust my God, my God, and I have a history. I know the character of God. And then you can move on. So real quick, I don't know who has been here and who has not, because guess what? I haven't been here very much. We've been traveling for soccer, but I want to give a quick review about some things, just in case you haven't been in any of these uh, ser sermons during this series. At the beginning of the world, God created Adam and Eve, and they lived in a place called the Garden of Eden, and it was perfect, right? It was beautiful. There was no sickness. There was no death. There was no hurting, and there was a tree in the middle of the garden, and God gave Adam and Eve a choice, and he said, I want you to serve me. I want to give you this perfect life, but you do have a choice. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the serpent came, which we know was Satan disguised as a serpent, and he said, oh, but that's not true. God just doesn't want you to be like him, so eat this apple and you'll be like God. And at that point, Adam and Eve had a choice to make. They could either trust what God said and, and live in his provision, or they could believe what the devil said. And what did they choose? They chose to believe what the devil said. And I love what Michael said last week. He said, if they wouldn't have done it, you would have right? Or I would have, because we're not perfect people. But at that moment, something happened. It was like, now they're saying, okay, devil, we choose to believe what you said instead of believe what God said. And it gave the devil authority on this earth, right? And so now that was known as the fall of man. And since the fall of man, sickness, death, disease, hurt, Hard work has been part of our world, and that's why we say we live on the earth with a curse. Does anybody have a question about any of that before I go on? That's a good review topic, but I know sometimes questions come up or you might not understand anything. Okay, I'll go ahead and go on. Now, um, so when mankind ate that apple and they chose to believe the devil's side of things, then it allowed him to run, run things down on this earth, and he's been wreaking havoc ever since. So let's turn to John 16, 33 and read just a little bit in that. <clears throat> so we're just understanding here, where do the bad things come from? We already know the enemy causes anything that there is that is stealing, killing, or destroying, and God causes anything that brings abundant life. But John 16, 33 says this. I'm gonna read it out of Amplified, Rick. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. That's the um, amplified version, or a lot of people know it as in this world you will have trouble. But a lot of people stop right there. Let's read the rest of the verse. It says, but be of good cheer. Take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. So even though we know that we live on an earth that's cursed, we know that there's evil going on, we can see death and sickness around us, God has provided us a way out. But you have a job in that, you have to choose that way. So that's where I'm talking about today. You have a choice, and this is where your future with God comes in. So I'm not going to stand up here and say, everything bad happens because of a choice somebody made, because it's not true. But I am going to say, I'm going to rely on what I know about God's character in the Bible. So even if I don't understand it, I'm going to rely on what God says in the Bible. The evil comes from the pit of hell. Good comes from God. And then I'm also going to take into account we have changed the way, 
Okay, let me do it this way. Michael talked about sweating yesterday. This morning when I was putting on deodorant, he was laughing at me because I use a lot of deodorant. <laughs> Especially, he was laughing at me, and I was like, babe, I'm preaching today. I sweat a lot when I preach. I'm wearing a jacket. People are going to give hugs. I need a lot of deodorant. <laughs> So then he says, well, you know, deodorant isn't good for you. There's been a lot of things that have come up because it's close to your glands or whatever. And so several years ago, my grandma had breast cancer, and then the following year, my mom had breast cancer, just a year apart from each other. And at that time, we learned a little bit about deodorant, and so I changed my deodorant to a good kind of deodorant that doesn't have aluminum, and it's like natural base. But it takes a lot to put it on, right? You have to use a lot of it. So I'm, I'm, and the reason I'm saying that is this. There are toxins in the world. We put things in our body that are not good for our body. We've changed the way that food, and I'm going to quote food because it's not necessarily all food, and I'm guilty of it too, but you have to realize that the things that you're doing to yourself, moving a lot or not, or lack of movement a lot, right? All of those things can affect. So if you say, oh man, something bad happened to me, now I have to have shoulder surgery, well... How were you lifting those weights? Were you doing that properly? Probably not, right? So um, understanding that things happen to our natural bodies that we might think are bad things happening to good people, which is just a product of our environment. So understand that wisdom too. And so now, now I'm getting to my message. I'm going to stand up here today and say this definitively, and we'll stand behind it because the Bible backs it. The choices you make today affect your tomorrow. And there's no arguing against that. And so because you have a choice, choose wisely. I love what Annie said when she came up here. God has set before you blessings and cursings, life and death. Therefore, choose life, right? So, so awesome that he gave us that choice. So I'm going to focus on three areas if you're taking notes today. And these are all choices that we make. Sometimes Pastor and I were talking this morning about um, people sometimes make these without even knowing that they're making these choices. So today I'm bringing it forward to you. I'm saying these are choices that people make knowingly or unknowingly. Be wise. Now you have knowledge to work with and, and make the choices wisely. The first one is forgiveness versus unforgiveness. The second one is walking in sin or walking with God. And the third one is I, I had a hard time wording this one, but looking for reliability and fulfillment in God or looking for reliability and fulfillment in other places in your life. So who do you where do you run when problems do come is the third point. So the first choice you have is forgiveness versus unforgiveness. The bottom line is this. If you don't remember anything else from this sermon today, remember this about forgiveness and unforgiveness. If you choose to forgive someone, your life is open for blessing, it's open for protection, for provision, for health. But if you choose unforgiveness, you have provided a foothold for the devil or an open door for the devil to come in and start working in your life because unforgiveness is a sin. So it's really important to understand forgiveness equals blessing. Unforgiveness is a blessing blocker. So let's turn to Mark 11, 23 and 24. When I went to Bible school, this was probably like what I would call the foundation scripture what a lot of um, a lot of teaching happened based around these scriptures not all of it we did a lot of bible but this is like what i would call a truly foundational scripture that has changed my life also so this is jesus and he's talking to his disciples and he says have faith in god truly i tell you whoever says to this mountain be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt it all in his heart but believes what he says will take place it shall be done for him for this reason, I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. So right now, these verses are saying that whatever you ask for, it shall be done for you if you believe it in your heart. Are you going to be asking for bad things to happen to you? Are you going to be believing God for, for traumatic events and sickness and things like that? No, you're believing God for the blessing, right? You're believing God for... Um, favor and health and and opportunities and and a place to minister to people and things like that but let's read verse 25 because that's just as important and it's a continuing on of Jesus conversation here so he says you will get whatever you're believing for it will be granted to you then verse 25 
And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, let it drop, leave it, let it go, in order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you of your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. So he's saying, while you're asking for these things, make sure your heart is clear. Make sure you're not in unforgiveness. Because if you're in unforgiveness, it's going to be blocked, right? You have to forgive others. God can forgive you. It is so, so, so important. Forgiveness is such a, in fact, there's a book out that um, Pastor Danny's pastor, when he was um, going to a church in Ohio, his pastor wrote this book called Forgiveness the key to, is the Key to the Kingdom. And forgiveness really is that important that you need to understand that a lot of things hinge on whether you're walking in love or if you're not walking in love because faith works by love. And is unforgiveness love? No, forgiveness is walking in love. So, so important. Now, I was thinking, okay, God, how do I tie this in for people? And a great example of this is Joseph. You guys remember Joseph in the Bible? He was the youngest of 12 brothers. His dad loved him more than he loved the other brothers because he was born from the wife that his dad loved the most. He was kind of pampered, you know. He was like the baby of the family, and he was pampered. He was given special gifts. He was given special duties, and his brothers hated him. He had dreams from God because God had a plan for his life, and he told his brothers those dreams, and they had a lot of disdain in their heart for him, so much to the point that they decided to kill him. And thankfully, the oldest brother was wise enough to say, oh, no, no, let's not kill him. Let's just beat him up and throw him in a hole. They ended up selling him to some slave traders. And after that, Joseph's life got pretty hard. So he went to um, a, land, a foreign land called Egypt, and he was wrongly accused. He spent time in jail. He was a slave. God always rose him up, though. No matter what was going on in his life, God would rise him up to the surface. He, would, he ended up being the head of the household where he was a slave in. He, and then when he was thrown into prison, wrongly accused, he ended up being uh, rose up to the, um, the boss, <laughs> for lack of better words, of the prisoners. So he was like guarding the other prisoners, even though he was a prisoner himself. He had a lot of favor. And the reason he had so much favor, we find out later, and, and when he got took out of prison, I should say this part, because this is the biggest part, when he was released from prison by Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, hey, you are so smart, I'm going to put you in charge of my entire kingdom. So I'm in charge, and then you're in charge after me. Sometimes when I tell this story to the kids, I say he was like the vice president, because that's like the best thing they can understand. But it's like an assistant king, kind of. All orders, whatever he said, happened in that country. So God really rose him up, and later we find out exactly why he forgave his brothers. His brothers ended up coming back. Uh, they needed some help. He helped them. They came back again, and he said, why don't you move here and let me take care of you? He forgave them for what happened. Now his brothers on the other side had a bunch of disdain in their heart. They had a lot of hatred for him, unforgiveness about whatever the dreams that he shared with them or whatever it was they chose to walk not in love they were not walking in love and when they sold joseph to be a slave their lives got hard right there was famine in their land they had to go to a foreign land to be able to uh, get food enough to eat and also the dad of them of the brothers were so heartbroken over joseph's death they pretended that he died so they were he was so heartbroken over the, his death that later on when the another brother came they said our dad will surely die if he finds out that something happened to this younger brother so it affected him so much so they're watching their dad suffer they're going through famine in the land they have to travel miles and miles and miles away to get to Egypt just to get food enough for their household so you can see where there was blessing on Joseph's life because he forgave and there was hard times on the brothers lives because they chose not to walk in love so that's a, an example that I found about forgiveness and unforgiveness and how it affected people in the in the Bible so it's really important to remember say Joseph, Joseph. Forgave. forgave okay if you want to read about Joseph write this down Genesis chapters 37 through 50 if you don't know the story go read it it's a great story now the second choice you can make is concerning sin the Bible says this it says everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God 
but it's what about what you're going to do about that that makes the difference in your life what are you going to do about sin all of us have sin what are you going to do about it and that's what makes the difference in your life so sin is two different things sin can be you're supposed god put something on your heart that you're supposed to do and you choose not to do it that's sin or if you know something that you're not supposed to do and you do it anyway that's also sin two things something you know you're supposed to do and you don't something you know you're not supposed to do and you do it anyway now when there's sin in your life we know this from the story of adam and eve too when sin came in their life there was a separation from god and that happens to us too god cannot be in the same vicinity as sin so if there's sin in your life it causes you a separation from god harder to hear his voice harder to listen to him harder to let him guide you all of those things so um, let's turn to 1 John 3, 6. <clears throat> this is a little bit harsh, but it's so important. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified too because it's got so many good, good little tidbits in here. It says, No one who abides in God or abides in him, who lives and remains in communion with and in obedience to him, so nobody who has communion with God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. No one who habitually sins has either seen or known him. They don't recognize, perceive, or understand him, and neither have they had an experiential acquaintance with him. So it's so important to know that if somebody lives habitually with God or remains in communion with God, they don't habitually practice sin. In 1 John 3, 8, just a couple verses down, it says this, But he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil. He takes his character from the evil one, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The reason the Son of God was made manifest was to undo the works the devil has done. So it's so important. You have two camps here. You have the camp that's in communion with God and who is listening to God. And what, has, what fruit do they have in their life? no habitual sinning and then you have the other camp which is do you remember what it said in verse 8 it says he who habitually sins is of their father the devil who wants to be in that camp not me for sure not me so I think it's really important to say you have a choice here you can choose to walk with God or you can choose to walk in sin and there's really no gray in that area you're either walking with God or you're walking in sin so your choice, your choice is to remain in sin or to get yourself out of that. And, it, and actually, I shouldn't say get yourself out. If you want the way out, it's through Jesus. It's through Jesus. First John chapter 2 talks all about this. It says, if you sin, you ask for forgiveness, Jesus will forgive you. First John 1 John 1.9 says he's faithful and just to forgive you. It also says in First in John chapter 2, First John is a great book for understanding what Jesus did for us, but it says if you do know God, you'll keep his commandments. That's what First John 2 says. So it's important. If you do know him, let's turn back to John 10 where we started today. If you do know him, it's so awesome what he does for you. This part of the Bible calls him your good shepherd, and I'm going to read several verses here, verses 3 through 5. Um, it's talking about like a sheep fence right here and then there's a gate and it says the watchman opens the door or the gate and the sheep listen to his voice and heed it so let's just put a little bit of background here God is the shepherd and we are the sheep okay so the sheep are listening to God's voice he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out when he has brought his own sheep outside he walks on before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. So what happens when you're walking with God? You know his voice. He leads you. You follow him. It says they will never on any account follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they don't know the voice of strangers or recognize their call. So when you choose not to walk in sin, but you choose to continually walk with God, that doesn't mean that you're never going to sin. But it does mean when you do sin, you say, God, forgive me, I sinned. I want relationships stored back with you. Thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus on the cross, right? And then you start walking with God, and all of a sudden he says, come here, little sheep. Let me lead you in the way you should go. Let me protect you from danger. 
Don't listen to anybody else's voice. My voice is the one that you know. And you can hear his voice clearly because you're not in sin. There's no separation from God. You have communion with God here. So I just love that when he talks about that. And that's just a few verses up above where he says, I have come to give you abundant life. It's so important to know who the stranger is and who God is. And if you can't distinguish the difference, say, God, where is there sin in my life that I can't distinguish your voice? And get that sin under the blood of Jesus and start walking with him so you can hear his voice clearly. Um, so listening to his direction in our lives, letting him lead us and following his guidance will, also, will often keep you out of the places where bad things happen. So we say, why did something bad happen to this person? Maybe they were in the wrong place. Maybe they weren't doing the right thing. Maybe they didn't follow what God was telling them to do. Maybe they didn't even seek God in that or listen to his voice. And if you're not with, in communion with God, then you can't hear his voice clearly. So in this story, I'm reminded of Abraham. Has anybody been reading about Abraham in Genesis? We just finished up. He just died a couple days ago in, in um, our Bible reading plan. Um, but he's, he wasn't without sin. He's called the father of faith, but he made some mistakes in his life, right? There were some times, Michael said, after we went to the movie his only son which was about Abraham and afterwards Michael decided to read the entire story of Abraham in his Bible that night because he was so like intrigued by it right <laughs> and so the next morning he said this is what I learned about Abraham he lied multiple times and was always blessed because of it <laughs> I said oh no no not because he sinned was he blessed he was blessed despite his sin and the reason was because he would always build an altar he would get his relationship right with God again after he sinned he would say God I'm going to build an altar. I'm going to consecrate myself to you. I have a covenant with you. And he would pull on that. And so despite his sin, he was blessed. And I think that's really important. And he heard from God. The man heard from God. Abraham, I want you to go to a place that I will show you. Start walking. Well, which direction do I walk, right? And that's what, that's basically how it started. And then once he got there, Abraham, I'm going to do this for you. And I need you to follow this. And I need you to do this. And he heard from God. And God appeared to him. And they walked in communion together. And so did Abraham habitually sin? Was his life one where he was constantly doing bad things? No. But he made mistakes. He got it right with God. He could hear God clearly. And God led him. He was one of the most blessed people in the Old Testament. And we call him the father of faith because he trusted what God said to him. He heard God and he trusted God. So I am going to talk, oh, write this down if you want to read about Abraham, Genesis 12 through 26. Okay, two sins that we often overlook, I think, because we've gotten too comfortable in our flesh. So I'm going to just tell you about these two sins that we often overlook. So these are some of the things that you might not knowingly do. The first one is indifference. God says, hey, I want you to start doing this, or I want you to stop doing this. And you just kind of brush it aside, right? Well, it's easier for my flesh. My flesh likes this. My flesh doesn't want to do that. My flesh doesn't want to step out in that. And so you just kind of brush it aside, not really like, no, God, I'm not going to do that, but I'll get to it some point. That's the sin of indifference. Do not fall into the sin of indifference. If you're hearing God tell you, this is something you need to change in your life, either start it or stop it, listen, obey, obey immediately, and the voice of God will continue to get stronger as you listen to him. The other one is disobedience. So in some way, God has made it clear to you where you have sin in your life, but you say, nope, I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to ignore that voice from God. He says, this is something that you need to work on in your life. And you say, no, God, it's okay. And you deliberately disobey him. Those are two big things. Indifference and disobedience don't fall into that trap. It's really easy for our flesh to say, well, it's not that important. But if God is laying it on your heart, it is important. And you will not hear his voice clearly 
unless you get those out of the way and you say, God, I will obey you when you talk to me. It's just like building a relationship, just practicing. When Michael says certain things, I'm like, that's not what he meant. I know immediately that's not what he meant because I know who he is as a person. It's the same way when you build a relationship with God. God says something and you listen to him, your relationship gets stronger because you know the voice of your father. So it's so, so, so important to be in um, communion with God and not habitually sinning. Don't fall into the trap of disobedience. Don't fall into the trap of indifference to God. The third choice, and this is the last one that I'm going to focus on today, is making the choice to allow God to be your shelter or the, the contrary to that would be looking for fulfillment elsewhere. Fulfillment or reliability elsewhere. So, because we read John 16, 33, and we know that in this world we shall have trials and tribulations and we have to endure things, when things come, where are you going? That's what I'm asking you. Are you going to run to the security of your job? Are you going to run to the security of your... Um, I better read my list because it sounds a lot better than what I'm going to say here. Um... Are you going to run to your traditions? Are you going to run to your fame? Are you going to run to um, your accomplishments? Or what kind of a name you've made? Your paycheck, your status, your qualifications? Are you looking for fulfillment in relationships, money, accomplishments, or reputation? Because if so, you're never going to find what you need. There's one place that is your shelter, and that's the Most High God. So... I obviously got ahead of myself. In Matthew 23, it says this. Jesus talk, is talking to the religious leaders here, and he's saying, you are hypocrites. Now, these are people that are leading the church of that day. And he's saying, you have made a mess of things. You're hypocrites. You act one way, and in your hearts, you are corrupt and evil. He's saying this. He says, you look to your traditions. You look to your fame. You look to your monuments. You look to your strict adherence to the rules that are set forth. But on the inside, it means nothing. You're dirty on the inside. You're corrupt. You're not walking in love. And in verse Matthew 23, 37, he says this. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. So God, or Jesus is talking to the Jews here. He's saying, how I've wanted to gather you under my wings like a mother hen to protect you. And what does it say? Gather, gather your children together as a mother fowl or hen gathers her brood under her wings. What does those last three words say? You refused. You refused. It's our choice. If he lifts up his wings, we can run to him or we can say, no, God, I got this. Look at all of these things I've done in my life. I'm good. I'm comfortable. So you have to make the choice. When something bad does come, when trials and tribulations do come, where are you going to turn? Um, so if you're looking for fulfillment or reliability in any of those other places, like I said, you're not going to find it. And this reminds me of David in the Old Testament. David was a very famous warrior. He was very good at what he did. God helped him a lot. He was a mighty warrior, the Bible says. And there was a king named Saul who um, was also a warrior. And the people would sing this about Saul, the king. Saul has killed his thousands. But then they would sing about David, who was not the king, but David has killed his tens of thousands. So he had a lot of fame in the land. It was um, undeniable how mighty of a warrior that David was. And he was a mighty warrior for the king, but the king hated him because obviously the people were, were so um, impressed with David. So David wasn't without trouble because guess what? King Saul said, I want to kill David right? And he's the king. He has a lot of power. So he's chasing David all around the country, and David's hiding in caves. And all the while, he's still fighting for God's people, which I think is pretty cool. But uh, we've been reading in Psalms, and in Psalms, many of them are written by David. And in all of these Psalms, David is talking about how he turns to the Lord. The Lord is the one who delivers me. The Lord is the one I call out to. The Lord is the one who takes care of me. And all of his accomplishments, all of David's accomplishments, all of the credibility he has as a mighty warrior, that's not what ended up delivering him. It was the reliance on the Lord that helped him through all of those bad times in his life. So if you want to read about David, First and Second Samuel, that's where you'll find about David. 
So there's one way that you can find reliability and fulfillment, protection and provision, and that's by allowing yourself to be gathered under the wings of our mother hen God, right? When he opens his wings, run to him. So I'm going to um, say this, because it's a, all about a choice. You have to choose to run to him. You have to choose to let his name be the strong tower in your life. You have to choose to find shelter at his side, and you have to choose to trust him when something bad does come. But how do you choose this? You have to know the word of God. You have to know the word of God. You have to know who God is, and you have to understand his character. You have to stand on the promises. All throughout his word is full of promises, but you have to choose. I'm going to believe this promise. I'm going to run to the name of my father. I'm going to choose to believe what his word says. I'm going to stand on this. I'm not going to be distracted by the, by the circumstances in my life. I'm not going to be put off track by what the news says. I'm going to run to my father God. I'm going to run to what I know is the truth. And this is the truth, but you have to know the truth and able to be able to run to it. So that's so important. Now, in John 16, at the end of it, it says, you will have trials and tribulations, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So you have to know who's fighting on your side. Who is it? It's God. In our Psalms this morning, we read, oh, I don't remember what number it is. Let me look it up. Psalm 74, it says this. Uh, whoever the writer is, is of this psalm, I don't know if it's David or not, but it says this in verse 12. You have always been and always will be my king. You are the mighty conqueror. You're working wonders all over the world. It was you who split the sea in two by your glorious strength. You smashed the power of Tan in the sea monster. You crushed the mighty, you crushed the might of Levithon, the great dragon. Then you took the crumbs and fed them to the sharks. With your glory, you opened up springs and fountains. Then you spoke, and the overflowing springs of Jordan dried up so we could cross over. You own the day, you own the night. Sunlight and starlight call you creator. The four corners of the earth were formed by your hands, and every ch changing season owes its beauty to you. You have to know exactly whose you are. You have to know that the creator of the universe is in your corner fighting on your side and that he has done it for all of these people in the Bible and he will do it for you. At youth on Thursday night, I told the kids, I said, you might not be going into battle. I taught actually about Abraham and how he took 318 shepherds and overcame five kingdoms with his 318 shepherds. And I said, you might not be going into battle against five kings. You might not be fighting for land. But as you're fighting the daily battles of your life, for them it was middle school and high school, for us it's the workforce, it's whatever, whatever your battles are, financial battles, health battles, whatever it is. And when you're fighting those battles, you have to understand who is on your side. 318 shepherds should have never overcome five kingdoms worth of armies, but he did because God was on his side. Over and over and over again, the underdog in the Bible wins. So when we look at this world and we think, oh my gosh, there's so much going on here. How are we ever going to make it through? It's easy to know how you're going to make it through. You open the word of God and you say, God, you have promised me this. I am standing on this promise. I know you will make a way. I know who, who wins in the end. I know who fights my battles. I know who will part my seas, so to speak. I know who my provider is. I know who my healer is. I know who I can trust on. Uh, trust in, rely on, and find safety in. So let's real quick turn to Psalm 91. We have time to do this. I'm only going to read the first four verses. It says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He's my fortress, He's my God. On Him I lead on him I rely and in him I confidently trust. For then he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover me with his pinions and under his wings shall I trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. So this is saying you have to choose to run to the shelter of your most high God. It only works. Read verse one. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high. That's where you have to be. You have to be in the secret place of the Most High. Bad things are going to come. You have to know where to go when those bad things come. You have to know where your trust is. 
You have to know who wins. You have to know whose you are and who you serve. It's so, so, so important. And at the end of verse four, it says this, his truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. This is his truth and this is his faithfulness. Or when God does something in your life, you write it down so you can remember how faithful he is to you. And then when you're struggling with something, you go back to it and you say, God, you are faithful. You came through then, I know you're gonna come through now. And that's exactly where your strength is going to come from. So you can rely on your master's degree, your big paycheck. You can rely on, oh, I've done this before, my experiences. You can rely on all of that, but it means nothing. The only thing that means something is running to the Most High God and making his secret place your shelter. So just as a quick review here, we live on an earth that's been cursed. Death is here. Sickness is here. The things we eat, the things we do affect our mortal bodies. There are things that I can't explain away. There's really things that I can't explain away other than John 10.10, which means that Jesus has given us a life abundantly and everything else comes from the pit of hell. Um, I'm going to trust in the character of God, what his word says about him being a good God, and that he has set before us a choice. So I'm telling you, choose forgiveness like Joseph did. Choose to get sinned under control so that you can hear God's voice and direction clearly, like Abraham did. And choose to let him be the rock steady in your life. Run to his name, make him your shelter like David did. And when hard times come, run to him, find your reliability and your fulfillment right there, where it will never fail. Let's just pray. Father God, you can stand up. I know it's hard. At the, I've been up here preaching, so it's easy for me to stay awake, but it's much harder when you're sitting down on a nice, comfortable chair. Father God, I thank you so much for the promises in your word. I thank you that you showed your faithfulness. I thank you that you give us your truth over and over and over again in the Bible. I thank you that, Father God, you've given us a way out. Just as you parted the sea for the Israelites when they were fleeing Egypt, Father God, you make a way for us in whatever trials that we're facing and whatever troubles that we have on this earth. You're constant and steady to make a way for us. So, Father God, I ask right now, if there's some place in our lives where we have unforgiveness, show it to us, Father God, so we can get that taken care of, so that we can choose to forgive, so that we can say, Father God, help me forgive this person. I didn't even know this was still an issue, but Father God, I see it now. Help me to forgive this person. I thank you, Father God, that you've given us a choice. You don't just say, hey, this is the only choice you have to walk with me, but you've given us a choice. So, Father God, as we draw near to you, you draw near to us. If we have any sin in our lives anywhere, show that to us. Reveal it to us so that we can get it under the blood of Jesus and we can walk freely with you in in right communion with you, Father God. And Lord, if there's any disobedience or indifference in our lives, Father, I ask that you would show that to us clearly also so we can take care of it. And lastly, Lord, as we learn more about your word, help us to run to you. Help us to make make you our shelter. Help us, Father God, to know where the truth comes from and to constantly, Lord, as we take in the word of God, you just build up our spirits and constantly make that stronger and stronger in us so that the first thing to come out of our mouths at a sign of trouble is the word of God. I thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. I thank you for your goodness in our lives. We love you, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you just sit down for a little bit, Kendra, go oh. back up here. Okay. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I love Kendra. I don't know if she does this to you, but boy, there's things, it really brings things out to me. It really kind of, it, it, there's some things that I was sitting there and on the inside I'm turning, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, really. Uh, and so I want to I wanna look at a couple of things that we talked about. Uh, fear. Fear is huge when it comes to um, opening the door to the enemy. Huge. More so, I believe, than what we what we pay attention to. And that can be our downfall if we're not careful. You know, I think about, you know, we, we look at, we go back and we look, we see all the difficulties that Job went through, but in 
Job, I believe it's chapter 3, 25, somewhere in there. He said, that that I've greatly feared has come upon me. Fear, we know, is the type of faith. And if we get into fear, we're in faith in the negative. And we can actually bring stuff on us. We can actually open the door to the curse in our lives through fear. Hallelujah. So that may be something that you're dealing with. The, I mean, the word should never come out your mouth, I'm afraid of that. I'm fearful of that. Um, there's no fear in God. And God is love, and there's no fear in love. Right? Okay? So fear is a huge part of of opening the door if we're not careful, okay? Now, I want to talk about this a little bit. Kendra, um, sometimes, you know, we've seen people make decisions to do things, whether to do something, to not to do something, based on other people, what other people may have said or done, <laughs> or what circumstances happened that took place. Well, the enemy can govern circumstances sometimes. And sometimes with people, and especially if they're, you know, unbelievers, shouldn't be happening to believers, but it does sometimes, make decisions and things that, um, that uh, is not good. And they do things. And so because of it then, sometimes we'll make a decision based off of that when God didn't tell us to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've seen people in, uh, especially ministers in ministry, sometimes uh, uh, get into an area of, well, they, uh, you know, they 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 moved on or they did sub this or they didn't do that or whatever because of what somebody did you know, or or didn't do. It wasn't God telling them to quit mm -hmm. or to 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 uh, you know move to another area or something like that. It wasn't God. It was because of the pressures they felt from things. And and so there's things sometimes that happens yeah. in this world, and the enemy puts the pressure on, and if we're not careful, we open the door to the enemy by making wrong choices based off of circumstances or people rather than the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you go to do something in your life, whether it's in business or whether it's in wherever it's at, um, whatever, make sure that it's the, it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you to do this or to do that or to go this direction or that direction, not circumstances or people. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about things that open the door to the enemy and sometimes problems come into our lives. And we must rely Kendra, I, I would like you to talk just a little bit about the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The essential part that the leadership listening, you know, because she talked about choices, right? We make those choices based off of something. Is those choices based off of the leadership of the Holy Spirit or not? Kendra, how important is listening to the Holy Ghost to making right choices or wrong choices and or opening the door to the enemy? It's the vital part. And so I'm going to tell you this quick story. Years ago, I wanted a new vehicle. And I was believing God for a 2007 Yukon XL black. And my parents called and said, hey, we're, they knew this. My parents called and said, hey, we're going to an auction, and guess what they have there? They have a 2007 Yukon XL, black. Do you want us to bid on it for you? I was like, I don't know. Let me ask Michael. So I asked Michael. Michael, at the time, if you don't know, this time in our lives, we were in the middle of having babies. We, Michael was going to school full time, and he was working 80 hours a week. I owned a preschool, and I was in the middle of having babies. We had babies everywhere at that time. And... Um, we were both 
tired, we were both exhausted. And when I asked Michael about that, he said, sure, sounds good to me. And that was the end of it. So we said, hey, we'll pay this much for it. My parents said, good. So they went and bid on it, and they bought it. And it ended up being a lemon, didn't it? The motor was bad. The, there was several things wrong with the inside. And I thought, God, how did we miss this? And right away we knew we never asked God. We were indifferent. We just made the decision based on what? I was believing for we made the decision based on we were tired you know we just didn't even ask God and that's so here's exactly things that lined up mm -hmm. to your prayers mm -hmm. but it wasn't God exactly that lined those things up things can happen in the natural the enemy can manipulate things in the natural because he works in the natural realm he can't mm -hmm. in the spiritual realm on the inside of you and I but there's things that can come into place if we're not careful we think it's God that's opening this door. Yep. And so it's just so important to say, God, what about this, before you make any decision? And I'll tell you, we owned that thing for like six weeks, and then we sold it, we traded it off, and got our Suburban, which we still have, and I love that Suburban. But, I, or I enjoy it. I shouldn't say I love it. I enjoy it. And I will say this, out, out of all of our entire married 18 years, which seems like a lot to me, even though you guys have been married for 40, Michael will say that's one of the three worst decisions we ever made. And we could have avoided that if we would have just asked God. He would have told us no. Everything happens yeah. for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> or so we make not, choices that affect not. our future, right? But I will say this. In John chapter 16, The reason it says, was they didn't listen to, the whole, listen to the Holy Ghost. We didn't even right. ask. That was yeah. the indifference part that I was talking about earlier, too. But it says this, um, when the spirit, in John 16, 13, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak his own message, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come, things that will happen in the future. If me and God have future, I have to rely on the Holy Ghost because he's the one telling me what decisions to make for that future to turn out the way God wants us to. So it comes out of that relationship again, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It comes out of that relationship. And that's what she was talking about earlier, um, was that relationship based, the, the, you know, making those choices, expecting his leadership. What happened? You go back to the garden, and in the cool of the day, what happened? Adam would come, uh, would, God would come down and fellowship with Adam. They walked together, commune together. That's a principle, that's an illustration of today. We have to be walking together with our Father, communing with Him on a daily basis. It happened every, it happened every day. It was a daily thing. Yep. And it has to happen in our life every day. Amen? And so, so our desire for this has been, why do bad things happen to good people? When someone asks you that question, are you prepared to answer that? Because you need to have an answer, and it doesn't need, well, you know, let me, let me think about that. or what. It should be something that's on the inside that's obvious that you know. Now, now, as you can see, there's a lot of things that we cover here that can open the door or can cause, like Kendra said, uh, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him is a sin. Okay. Or either not doing what the Holy Spirit tells us or doing something the Holy Spirit didn't tell us. Right? Sin means missing the mark or opening the door to the enemy. Mm -hmm. And so whatever, we've got to keep that door closed to the enemy. Right? But how many of you know that in this world, the Bible says you will have trouble. Mm -hmm. There's going to be trouble. But then what's he going to say? But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The overcomer lives inside of That's us. That's right. I said the overcomer lives inside of us, praise God. And he's there to help us to overcome in every situation. Praise and you have God. to make the choice to yeah. go to him. That's, That's right. That's the thing. People don't make the choice to go to him. I will also say this. When somebody asks you why do bad things happen to good people, you need to know on the, this bothered me when I was young so much. I was saved when I was four, 
and basically served God my entire life. I just love the Lord. I've had a relationship with him for that long, but when I was in college and I received the Holy Spirit and I started learning about where bad things actually come from, I was free in my spirit because my whole life I thought, if God is so good, how can all of these bad things happen to people? And so when I really understood that bad things don't come from our Father God, it changed my life. And I think a lot of times people choose not to go to church or serve God or learn about God because of that taunting question. So if you as a believer can know the answer to that question, Jesus came to deliver us from that. It might free some other people. So. And, and so you can tell through this that there is going to be bad things that comes mm -hmm. along. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to predict doom and gloom, but bad things do come along. Mm -hmm. Important thing is, what do we do when they come? Yeah. I mean, can we help to avoid them from coming again? Can we learn from those mistakes, maybe if it's mistakes that we've made? Or is it something sometimes that we just have to dig in and say, bless God, you know, I'm more than a conqueror regardless of what it looks like. Yeah. And let it strengthen us, and you brought out this point, even though God didn't bring them, that finding, how, how does this strengthen us? By in the midst of that uh, adversity, we grab a hold of our rock and, uh, and, and hold on like never before and rise to the surface, praise God, and know that we're more than conquerors and stand and not give up because we win in the end. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Know this, that we're not, you know, okay, I'm born again, praise God, so now I'm just going to live a life of ease, praise God, all is well. No, it don't happen like that because you're living in this world. See, you was talking about the curse and, and, and Hebrews and and Romans even talks about it too. Paul talked about the curse of the law, that those who are under law are under that. The curse of the law was poverty, sickness, premature death, those things. But we're redeemed from that. We walk by faith and not by sight, praise God. And so walking un by faith is walking out from under that law because if you have to think, okay, I've got to keep the letter of the law here, you know, to keep from sinning. No, you... You walk by faith in the voice, the leadership of the Holy Spirit on the inside now when he tells us not to do something or to do something. He's trying to keep us out of that curse. Hallelujah. Thank God we can walk outside of that. Amen? And then finally, before we close here, uh, now, anybody have a question for Kendra? Hallelujah. It's okay. Who's going to be a bold one to say, you know, this is something I'm, I wonder about on this. This series is almost done, so if yep. you have a question, it would be a great time to yep. ask a question. Yeah. If there's something, and, and don't, don't be embarrassed. Yeah, don't be embarrassed. There's, there are no stupid questions. There's still sometimes I go to Dad and I say, what about this? And he sure. has an answer. So do you have a question, Cypress? What's your question? <laughs> I'll get to you after church, okay? Zach. So Zach's asking, he said, when Adam and Eve did eat of the tree that they're commanded not to, why did that, how did you say that, why did the dominion go to, why did the dominion go to Satan, what's the mechanics of that? Okay, well God gave us a choice, right? He said, here, follow me, I have this sweet life for you, I have this good life, and here comes Satan and he says, God's a liar, believe me and you'll be like God. So they chose to believe the devil and they chose to eat the fruit and then all of a sudden, who is their father now? Even though it was a sin, right? So they still have the father God, but who did they give the power to in that, in that choice? Did they give the power to God or did they give the power to the serpent? So the God the was God himself to them, but by disobeying this God that had set them up in the garden, they turned to Sat the god Satan and obeyed him. And in doing that, they chose to put their alliance with Satan over God. And the key is whose alliance they went with. 
So it's that's the mechanics of it. And it's just like what we talked about in First John, where it says you have two choices. You can choose to walk with me, or if you choose not to have fellowship with me, there's one other choice, and that's the devil. And so in that moment in the garden, they chose the devil, and that's who they align themselves with. Alliance me, is a really good word for let that. Me, let me say it this way. As a believer in this life, even though we're born again, we've asked Jesus to come into our life. At any time in our life, any of us in this room right now, can cho we're in the life cycle. We're in the cycle of life where this is where the blessing's at. This is what the giver of life is in life. Any time in our life, we can choose to step over into the death cycle. And in doing that, then God has to step back in our lives even though Jesus is our Lord at that, you know, because of a decision we make in this world, yet God has to step back because of our choice and then because we've made our allegiance to the enemy, to Satan, into the death cycle. Even though God wants the blessings in our life, he can't pour those blessings out because our allegiance is not to him now. It's to the enemy, into the death, into that world. And there's even been born-again Christians that have completely turned their allegiance to, to Satan back to Satan and are serving Satan with everything they've got. There's no blessing of God in their life. Now, the other question would be, will they end up going to glory? Will they be in heaven? I can't answer that question. Only, Only God, God can, can do that. Because mm -hmm. that's where it then gets into, well, once saved, always saved, and what's not. Hmm? Yeah, well, and that word die is separated from God. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not, and, and that's not to, up to us to judge. We can't judge and say, well, that person's going to hell because of the life that they're living. That's between God. God's the one because he knows the heart. We don't know the heart in that. Yeah. Does that help a little bit? And. I would say this to Zach, we're constantly making that choice even today. So it wasn't just that Adam and Eve made that choice. Right. We also are making that choice. So you can either choose to have an alliance with God and walk in that blessing, or you can choose to have an alliance the other way and, and suffer. Amen. <laughs> but if you have more questions, feel free to ask them if we didn't answer. Hallelujah. Todd? Amen. That's right. That's Amen. right. What he did for anybody in the Bible, he'll Amen. do for you. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Going once. Going twice. So I am going to wrap things up next week, uh, kind of in this series, because there's uh, just a couple of things that I want to talk about in moving forward and just kind of closing this on this. But so when someone asks you why bad things happen to good people, it's not always just a cut and dry answer, uh, you know, to say this. Well, you know, even in the Bible, it says, well, is the reason for, remember the one that was sick, the young one that was, uh, well, was, was they sick because of, uh, of what, uh, the sin of their fathers or whatnot? Yeah. And so um, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's a bigger spectrum than that. But overall, it, it comes under these categories that we talked about. There's numerous things. We live in a world with a curse, number one. You know, number two, choices affect so much. The open doors affect, you know, so much in that. But these are all things that we as believers need to be walking that keeps us free of these things, regardless of what it is. I mean, not exempt, I didn't say exempt, but I'm free in the midst of them. It doesn't mean just because we walk with God, because we're doing everything we need to do, the problems won't come along. I mean, even though there's believers, you know, and I hear, I've heard people even say that, well, you know, this person was a person of faith. They, were, they had a strong faith, and they were believing God, and they died. What happened? Well, I don't know if I'm going to get into that next week or not. But don't be judging someone where they're at because you have no idea. You and I have no idea the things that's going on in people's lives. 
You don't know where their faith is at. And it's not, we don't go around saying, well, okay, it was because their lack of faith that they died. You don't know that. That's between them and God in that. But we know that the Bible says you will die. One thing is, is guaranteed here on this earth is you will go back to the dust of the earth unless we go by the way of the rapture. And regardless, our earthly bodies are not going to glory anyway. You're going to have to shed that thing anyway before you... It, it can't handle glory. Hallelujah. But the thing is, is when, when you really see what we call death or separation from God, or not separation from God, but dying physically in this body, we see that Paul talked about so nonchalantly, well, should I go or should I stay? Well, you know, it would be, I'd rather go, but for your sakes, I guess I'll stay. Okay? Praise God. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Kendra already prayed, but I want to pray this specifically. Father, we're so thankful for your wisdom and your direction in our lives. Lord, we ask you to forgive us when times that we haven't listened to you, that we haven't followed through with your voice, with your leadership. And we just right now say in the name of Jesus, we're done with that. From this day forward, we're going to endeavor to do our very best to obey you and to keep that door shut, those doors, any of those doors, shut to the enemy. But Father, we're just so thankful that in all these things, we're more than conquerors through you. Hallelujah. But there's nothing that comes along that we can't overcome. Hallelujah. So, so thankful. And Father, we're so thankful for your love that if you be for us, who can be against us? That, Father, that we can do all things through you who strengthens us. We love you. Thank you for helping us in this life. And, Lord, those that are struggling with things, we ask you to send them across our paths that we can help to give them the truth because we know that in the truth is freedom. And, Father, I know that there's many, even Christians, have believed the lie that there's things, bad things that's happened and it's been because of you. And Lord, we just want them to see the truth and to know that you're a good and loving Father and that you're for us and not against us. Thank you, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. How many of you are enjoying this or getting some answers? through this series. Praise God. Amen. Well, be blessed. Have an awesome day. Praise God. And the rest of this, uh, well, the week's over. I guess we're starting a new one. So be blessed.